Okay, welcome back. Um, we're here to present part two of the uh, introduction to the computer information systems major. Uh, links to part one will be down in the comments section. And uh, this is me, Professor Richard Holzak in the Zicklin School of Business. Links to my uh, websites are also going to be down in the comments. So where we left off, we were talking in brief about the CIS major. We talked a little bit about the required courses, which are CIS 3100, Object Oriented Programming, the Database Management Systems course, the CIS 4800, Systems Analysis and Design, and then the capstone course, CIS 5800, Information Technology Development and Project Management. We also talked about then the list of um, the different electives that we can uh, possibly take. And so what I want to do in this video is talk to you in some more details about uh, the uh, required courses. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit more um, in detail on these required courses. Uh, as we mentioned, there are four required courses. The first one is object oriented programming. And today, as far as 2013 is concerned, when I'm, I'm talking about this, uh, that first course is done using the C language. It's geared towards first time programmers. And really, it's there to get the basics of the logic and the structure of software programs. So when a software developer sits down to write some code, what is it that they have to do? Um, so there's a certain logic to the way programs are developed. There's a structure to how software programs are written. Um, and really, this is the, the introduction there. There are some uh, basics of data structures, uh, which are taught as well. So. Um, given that our software program has to deal with certain types of data and manipulate certain types of data, uh, how is it that we're going to set up the program or structure the program to, to um, adequately address those data needs? And uh, so those are really the main, main sort of thrust of the CIS 3100, the Object Oriented Programming course. Um, in practice, Today we're typically using Microsoft Visual Studio. I'll have again another video on how you can get Microsoft Visual Studio uh, at Baruch College. Um, but this is sort of the tool of choice. Many, many businesses use Visual Studio. I know a lot of folks are, are um, also using development tools on the Mac and under Linux and, and other operating systems. There's a, a whole ton of uh, tools that are out there. The businesses that recruit from Baruch College say, we'd really love it if you guys um, did some work with Visual Studio. So that's what we, uh, we end up using in practice for the course. Second course up is CIS 3400, which is our database management systems course. And again, this one is also geared towards first time database developers. So if you've never touched a database management system in the past, you know, this is really the course for you. Even if you have worked with some DBMSs, we really want to kind of go back to the basics and really talk about how is it that a good database is designed, uh, what is the logic and the structure of a well-designed database. Um, so again, we always start with what is the business problem we're trying to address, and then how are we going to map that into requirements on the database side. So what are the tables? What are the columns in those tables? How do we need to set all of that up? Um, so there's definitely a process, a set of steps that we can use um, to, to build up that database. We then focus on relational database. Uh, I think today more than 85, 90% of the world's data is in what are called relational databases. And the language that is used to program relational databases is called the structured query language. Some people call it SQL or SQL is another abbreviation. If you hear people talking about the SQL database, they're talking about this particular language called structured query language. Um, so that's part of the practice that you get here in the CIS 3400 course is you really get to learn the structured query language very, very well. Um, the final portion of the course is really sort of a mix of topics, including things like transaction processing, how we integrate databases into things like websites. Um, we go through some ethical and legal issues and stewardship over data. Uh, we talk about the roles of the database administrator and the data administrator, so really a host of other sort of topics that are, that are put in there um, as the final portion of the course. 
In practice for this course, we do use uh, Microsoft Access. The main reason we use Microsoft Access is because it's just about everywhere. Um, anybody who has the, the, my, the Microsoft Office uh, suite tends to have Microsoft Access in there. It allows us to very easily set up um, some nice databases. Uh, it allows us to practice the structured query language and I would say most importantly it allows groups to work on group projects to get really nice um, access databases set up and running within the span of a semester. Uh, this is a particular sore point among some students. They say, how come we're not using Oracle or SQL Server? And the bottom line is we have a lot to cover in this course. And it's probably best if we can get you going with the structured query language and some of the other interesting bits um, about database systems without having to worry about spending hours trying to configure uh, sort of a higher end or server based uh, database. So that's really the main, uh, main reason we're going with Microsoft Access there today. All right, last two require courses. We've got the CIS 4800, which is Systems Analysis and Design. Really, the entire focus, uh, sorry, focus of the course is the system development life cycle, what we call the SDLC. And so this takes us from gathering those business requirements, identifying a problem or an opportunity, how you document those requirements, and then how you translate them into technical specifications. So this is the key role of the systems analyst that you play here. We do a lot of diagramming. A lot of time technical specifications end up being described as diagrams and other documentation methods. We then talk about what are the latter stages where we go into the software development, coding, and testing. Um, there are not so much focus here on actual coding and testing as there are just going through the major steps, right? So how do we um, finish a project? How do we deploy a project? What happens when we have issues in the testing phase? What happens when bugs are found as they inevitably are? How do we maintain the software? How do we release um, you know, new releases of software and so on? Uh, in practice for this course, we, we have used the IBM Rational um, suite of products. Again, this is kind of a, a high-end um, computer-aided uh, software engineering tool. You'll sometimes hear about case tools used. And really, it helps with um, sort of having one repository where all of the technical specifications and requirements can be gathered and certainly has support for a variety of diagramming tools. All right, then after those set of courses, right, so the object-oriented programming, the database, and then maybe the, the systems analysis and design, usually at that point students go off and take a bunch of electives. The final course which is required in the major is the CIS 5800. We call it IT Development and Project Management. And the idea here is you take this course at the very end of your time with us here at Baruch College or, or towards the end, and essentially, you take everything that you've learned and you, you put it into practice through an entire semester. So we construct an information system from start to finish using the system development life cycle you learn in CIS 4800. Probably most of the projects are used, um, going to employ some type of a database, doesn't necessarily have to be access, but maybe you've taken some other electives where you've learned about other database systems, learned about how to build websites and connect them to your database systems. Or maybe you, you write the software in C++ or Java, or maybe you make something like an app on your Android phone. Whatever the case is, you're going to take this project from beginning to end. And also we bring in there the project management. So how do we assign different roles to the project? How do we set up the timeline? What are the critical paths in this project? How do we meet milestones? Uh, how do we set up reports to make sure that the project is um, progressing? And so again, we call this the capstone project. Uh, you'll typically take this as one of your last courses as an upper level senior. And it's really, again, designed to sort of bring together everything that you've learned as a CIS major. OK, so that basically takes us through the, the basics of the core of the CIS major. I'm going to end it here. And we will pick this up with um, selecting different combinations of electives in the next video. OK.
talk to you again soon.